Quantum Supremacy by Michio Kaku. This is a phenomenal book and it's a main inspiration for this video. It discusses quantum computing and the various applications for the field. I have it linked in the description if you want to check it out, it's highly recommended. It goes in depth on medicine, chemistry, energy, all of the innovations in recent years throughout every industry. However, there's one thing that really stuck with me while reading this. No matter what progress we make in creating more efficient solar panels or even nuclear fusion for limitless energy, no matter what we invest in cancer research or medicine, material science, physics, biology, psychology, engineering, in a few years none of it will matter because of quantum computing. It reminds me of the Human Genome Project. In 1990, the scientific community set out to map the entire human genome, at first by hand. Biologists would spend day and night writing down every single codon with pencil and paper. The entire project took over 13 years, and by the time it was finished, computers had gotten powerful enough to accomplish the same task in only a few years, maybe even months. A modern computer could do it in hours. To understand how big the quantum revolution is, we need to go back. Okay, not that far back. I was thinking more like 1945. The ENIAC, or Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer, catchy right, is at the forefront of electronic computation. It was created by the University of Pennsylvania for World War II and was easily the fastest of its time, able to perform over 5,000 additions per second. It didn't have storage or RAM or a battery or anything and it weighed over 30 tons and required six female operators at all times, but boy was it powerful for the time. It was the first time humanity had really harnessed the power of the electron to do its bidding and it was a massive leap for our species. Human society has gone through varying periods, or ages, in our history. We learned to control stone and make tools to hunt and cook. We forged bronze and iron to create swords and buckets. We harnessed the power of fire and steam for transportation and electricity. And now, we mold silicon wafers for our supercomputers and artificial intelligence and video games and whatnot. While you could argue that ENIAC was a massive leap forward in computing, the Silicon Age didn't really begin until 1971 with the invention of the microprocessor. This little guy, the Intel 4004, was significantly more powerful than the ENIAC could ever dream to be and it could fit on your fingertip. It wouldn't be fair to say one person invented it. It was a team effort from Fagan, Shima, Hoff, and Mazor. It sparked an all-out war between competing companies, improving upon each other at exponential rates, interconnecting these behemoths of computing across long distances through the internet until we got where we are today. Modern computers are a necessity for almost every task. It's almost an abnormality not to have one. People carry around supercomputers in their pockets to scroll memes or text their friends or watch funny, educational, entertaining one-minute videos on the periodic table from a really cool YouTube channel. Silicon really did transform everyone's life in some way, but all ages must come to an end. Meet David Deutsch. He kind of looks like Bill Gates, but he's not a con man. He first theorized the quantum Turing machine, which could theoretically run any program a normal machine could run at a necessarily faster rate. A quantum Turing machine could use the behavior of quantum particles like photons and electrons in a different way operating using qubits, which can exist in a quantum state of not fully one or zero. I'm not at all qualified to be talking about this, but what it boils down to is quantum computers can run several algorithms in parallel, and the more qubits you work with, the more algorithms you can run at an exponential rate. For example, one of the biggest uses for quantum computing is cryptography. In 2023, President Joe Biden declared a national emergency and an executive order to invest in cybersecurity, primarily focused on quantum computation. Most computers use RSA encryption, which works by encrypting the message using the product of two incredibly large prime numbers. If you know one of these factors, you can decrypt the message. Using this form, it would take a classical computer trillions of years to crack because it has to guess and test every single one. A quantum computer break that code in only 8 hours. This is because instead of guessing each one individually, it can guess them all at the same time and give you an answer in the same amount of time it would take to guess just one. Okay, that's not actually how it works. You can use a quantum computer to find the period of the factors, which gives you the period of the prime number in the form of a sine wave, which you can apply a Fourier transformation to and split it into multiple sine waves to find the digits of the number, and I have no idea what I'm saying, but it's a, it's a good example of how quantum computers can do a bunch of stuff simultaneously. It's also very useful for chemistry and material science. Instead of manually testing every reaction, 
a quantum computer could run them all at the same time to find the most efficient process. The same principle applies to medicine too. Instead of testing every drug reaction in real life, a quantum computer could simulate the process for you. If quantum computing reaches the point of simulating individual atoms and molecules, the sky is the limit on what humanity will be able to achieve. 100% efficient processes will become commonplace. Unlimited energy, the end of suffering and starvation, uh, spreading into the universe, perhaps interacting with parallel worlds. All made possible by quantum computers. The Silicon Age is over. Welcome to the Quantum Age. <laughs>